I have these clips on the timeline and I would like to create a lower third that enters the screen on this first clip because my lower third doesn't like to be late so it shows up early. The first thing you need to do is to create all the elements that you will animate. Make sure you enable the essential graphics panel because we will use it a lot. Once this is open, I can write some text. I press T, click once somewhere on the image, let's choose white as a color for now, and I write my text, edited in Premiere Pro. Now, here's my first uh, small trick. I usually write all my lower thirds in caps, and there's this little icon here. If you press it, it doesn't matter if you enabled caps on your keyboard or not, it will write everything in caps. This is helpful. So let's create a rectangle behind this text. Go up here, click on this icon and choose rectangle. It will show up on the screen and you need to resize it and change its properties. First of all, when you drag it here, you will see that it covers the text. So you need to drag the rectangle layer below the text layer. You can also rename the layer to rectangle. It will be easier to know which one is what. Small details to be organized. Just use these handles to resize this box behind the text exactly as you want, something like this. Then select the text, make sure align to left is enabled. Now up here on the right, hold down shift and select both layers. Just to make sure the text is exactly in the center of the box, click on align center horizontally and then vertically. Select the box and change the color if you want. I will go with a brighter yellow in this case, and then select the text and change its color to black, for example. This will create more contrast. For the box, you can also add a shadow if you want. I find it useful, especially when the image behind is bright and you need some separation. You can change the color, the opacity, direction, and the blur of the shadow. A lot of good stuff you can edit here. Now, we didn't start it to animate this yet, but I want to introduce a problem. If I want to change this text into something else, you'll notice that the box is not resizing, it's not responsive. So if you want to use this lower third more than one time in a video, it will become complicated because you need to resize the box manually. But let me share with you this second big tip. I will undo the text change so now everything looks good and all I have to do is to select the rectangle layer and from here where it says pin 2, I open this drop down and instead of video frame, I change it to my text. I mean edited in Premiere Pro. Then make sure you press on this small box in the center and the edges should become blue after that. So now if I change the text, the box is responsive. And also, also when I select the text and move it, the box comes with it, which is really useful. Okay, so we have all the elements and we need to create the animation. But first, a few words about today's sponsor, which is audio.com, a website with awesome music and sound effects for creators just like you. Their audio pro plan is the best value for your money. This is an annual music and sound effects subscription that provides unlimited downloads to over 6,000 music tracks and over 30,000 sound effects. The audio pro plan covers any commercial usage. Content creators and filmmakers can download music and sound effects and use them in any digital form. Simply download and use without any concerns. In fact, when you're listening to a music track, you'll find this little icon here that says this song is approved for YouTube monetization. And all the files downloaded in the subscription period are yours to use forever, even if you decide to not continue for the second year. Now, here's the awesome part. Audio.com is offering annual access to their pro plan for 70% off, driving the price down to only $59 for the whole year. This means $4.9 per month. If this is not cheap, I mean, come on guys. Use my link in the description for 70% off or go to audio.com slash Christy. Now let's animate this lower third and make it smooth like butter. First we need to reposition it. The easiest way to do this is to enable the safe margins, which is this icon here. If it's not here, don't panic, you just need to click the plus sign and drag the safe margins icon near the other ones here. Once it's active, you'll see these margins and now you can drag the lower third in the right position. Did I mention that you can also scale it however you want? For me it looks too big now so I will dial it down and then if it's the case reposition it in the right place. Disable the safe margins and now it's time to create keyframes for this animation. This will be a lot of fun. Select the text then go to the layers up here, create a group 
and then rename it however you want. Now select the rectangle, create the second group and rename it. In the effects panel, search for transform. Then drag and drop it twice in each group that you just created, above the rectangle and above the text layer. Go to the beginning of the timeline, hold shift and uh, press the right arrow two times. This means 10 frames forward. Now click on the transform effect that is above the rectangle and then go to the effect controls panel. Create a keyframe for the position, then move the playhead to the start and create another keyframe. Now take this value, click and drag the mouse uh, downwards until the box is somewhere outside the frame. Now if I play the animation it looks like this, a very harsh animation without motion blur. Let's fix this easily by going back to the transform effect and modify the shutter angle from 0 to 180 degrees. This adds the motion blur instantly as you can see and it looks really good, right? But now I need to go to the first frame and readjust the position of the box to get it out of the frame. Now let's add some smoothness to this motion because it's too linear. Select the second keyframe, right click and from temporal interpolation choose ease in. Now if I hit play the motion is much smoother but we can do it even smoother. How about that? Click on the arrow near the position and you will see this graph. Drag this handle all the way to the left. Now the motion will be fast in the beginning and it will slow down when it reaches the end. So if I press play now, look how smooth it is. It looks really good, right? And you can always experiment and make the animation shorter or longer by changing the position of the second keyframe. For the text you can apply exactly the same method, but this time you need to work with the transform effect from the other group. Let's say the text needs to end up here in this position when the box animation ends. So change the shutter angle to 180 degrees to insert motion blur, make a keyframe here for the position, then go back some frames on the timeline. Now create another keyframe here and then change the vertical position of the text until it's out of the frame. Now for the second keyframe, right click and choose ease in, just like we did for the box and then drag the handle more to the left to create even more smoothness. You may need to readjust the position of the keyframes like I did here because the text needs to enter the box at a specific time. So have patience with this, try different versions, but in the end it should look something like this. So here's another problem that I need to fix. But hey, if you think this video is helpful and you learned something today, and it's helpful, and you learned something today, and it's helpful, then press the thumbs up because it helps me too. The problem now is with this text. It's visible when it enters the frame, but I want it to appear only when it's inside the box, so I need to create a mask. Click here to create a rectangle. Also, let's make it white and then reposition it and resize it in a way that it covers the bottom part of the frame under the text. It even bites a little bit from the yellow rectangle. Make sure to drag it inside the group that contains the text, but very important, above the transform effect. After this, click on mask with shape and then on invert. And here's the result. The text is masked until it appears inside the yellow box. So if you deselect all and play the animation, it looks really, really good now. The only thing you should do is to select the mask again and then pin it to the text, making sure you click here in the center to activate all edges. This means that if you will change the text however you want, all the other elements will be responsive and will adjust themselves automatically. The yellow box will become shorter or longer and the same happens with the invisible mask. Okay, now you will need to make the end of the animation. So from the effects, drag another transform and place it on top of everything in the list. Change the shutter angle again to 180, then go near the end of this clip, make a keyframe for the position, then go forward and create another position keyframe. Change the position of the motion graphic to go out of the frame and it should look something like this. For the first keyframe, right click and choose Ease Out this time and then enter the graph mode to make it very smooth by dragging the handle to the right. This means it will start slow and then it accelerates while it's getting out of the frame. The next step is to go right up here where you see these two blue handles for the intro and outro duration. You need to extend the intro until you reach the point 
where the lower third finished the animation. Do the same for the outro before the motion graphic starts to leave the frame. Basically, the keyframes need to be inside the markers for the intro and outro. This means that if you decide to make this clip longer, you'll always protect those keyframes. Those animations will not be affected when you do this, and this is a huge thing. So before giving you the bonus tip, I have to be honest and say that you're a hero if you stayed until this point. So this bonus tip is for you. Let me show you how to save this lower third as a template and use it in any future projects. First, change the text into something more general because the template will be saved with this text. Let's call it lower third one. Okay, now right click on this layer and choose export as motion graphics template. Give it a name. You choose where do you want to save the template. I will choose local templates folder and Premiere will export it and then you will find it in the Essential Graphics panel if you click on Browse. Here's the template, and all you need to do is to drag it on your timeline wherever you want and resize it and modify it however you want. Let me show you an example. So here, when the clip starts, I want a text with Edited in Premiere Pro. So I double-click the text to edit it, and I can also change the duration of the animation. Now, keep in mind you can always change colors as you wish, for example, I click on the rectangle here and change the fill to white. You can also change the font of the text and so on. Now let's say I want to have another lower third on the second clip. Hold down Alt and drag this graphic to the right and it will create a copy. I double click the text, write for example, shot on the Canon EOS R and make the animation a bit longer. I just need to stretch it out and that's it. Now we can hit play and as you can see, Everything is in place, smooth animations, motion blur, everything is responsive, and it looks very, very clean. Okay, so make sure you check out audio.com if you want some quality music and sound effects for your video projects. Use my link in the description for 70% off if you want to support this channel. I'm Christy, thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time.